Real story, this is my word. I saw a swastika next to the N word. It was spray painted on a bus set over a black woman's face. Man, this is so sad. You would think I was in Mississippi, G A Bama, or Tennessee. Nope, right here in California, where slave patrols and segregation is upon ya. Good morning. Um, welcome to the Assembly Public Safety Committee hearing. Uh, we will begin with uh, all witnesses, all witness testimony will be in person. There will be no phone testimony option for this hearing. You can find information on the committee's website, assembly.ca.gov backslash committees. Um, we have one pulled item, that's item number four, AB 702 Jackson, uh, Local Government Financing Juvenile Justice. Uh, we will begin as a subcommittee, and I have a list of five authors, one, two, three, four, five, six bills, and no authors present. Also, uh, thank Ms. Ortega's here. Um, hopefully the other members will be here so we can establish a quorum. We have a very limited time. Uh, Ms. Wilson, you may come and begin. <clears throat> You're the last one to sign up and the first one here, so I'm guess what? Waiting for a witness. Well, what does she need a witness? I mean, my. Um, this, this enjoys an I recommendation from the chair, <laughs> and I feel pretty confident <laughs> that. <laughs> I mean, I just feel confident that your attempts to end slavery in California might be pretty successful. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you to the members of the committee. It is my absolute pleasure um, to be here today, not only standing, not only um, being the assembly member who's authoring this bill, but also as the chair of the Legislative Black Caucus to bring forward this particular um, constitutional amendment, ACA 8. This assembly constitutional amendment would remove the exception of involuntary servitude from our state constitution and declare that all forms of slavery are prohibited, period. California is among only 16 states with an exception clause for involuntary servitude in its state's constitution. Most recently, voters in Alabama, Oregon, Tennessee, and Vermont removed involuntary servitude language from their state constitution. ACA 8 is an opportunity for the most progressive state in the union to catch up to these states and also serve as a model for others in our nation. Involuntary servitude is an extension of slavery, period. There is no room for slavery in our constitution, which should reflect our values this year in 2023. The legacy of slavery and forced labor runs deep in California's history from the exploitation of indigenous people in Spanish missions to black slaves forced to mine for gold. Though California entered the union as a free state, free with quotes around it, there were more than 1,000 enslaved African Americans as well as thousands of enslaved indigenous people in California at a time when the total population was just 100,000 people. Today, slavery takes on the modern form of involuntary servitude, including forced labor in prisons. Slavery is wrong in all forms, and California should be clear in denouncing that in our Constitution. ACA 8 prioritizes rehabilitation for incarcerated people. Incarcerated people should be able to choose jobs and shifts that allow them to work, continue to air, sorry, Incarcerated people should be able to choose jobs and shifts that allow them to continue their education, to get counseling, 
and to participate in other rehabilitative programs that facilitate growth and transformation without the fear of additional punishments for exercising their right to choose. Here to testify, <laughs> she's here. Right. Um, I'll see if April Grayson has made it into the building. Uh, she's on her way. Okay, John Vasquez. <laughs> April was with Sister Warriors Freedom Coalition. If she walks in, I'd like her to be able to testify. And here we have John Vasquez. Sorry about my reading glasses. <laughs> They're it's catching up to me. What's going on top of your head? Uh, these are like sunglasses, oh, okay. like, it's going to be 90 degrees today, you know, it's like, <laughs> well, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is John Vasquez. I'm the policy manager for Courage. I also survived 25 years of incarceration, so I'm very familiar with the harmful effects of slavery behind prison walls. Upon my release, I graduated summa cum laude with a BA in sociology and minor in criminal justice. And although history wasn't my major, it was my favorite, one of my favorite subjects. The history of slavery in California's prison system is directly tied to racial capitalism, white supremacy, and the subjugation of black and indigenous people. This is evidenced by the 1850 Act for the Government and Protection of Indians, which made it legal for any white man who found a native person loitering, strolling about, unemployed, begging, or leading an immoral life to take that charge before a judge. The judge would then have the native person arrested, tried in court, imprisoned, and sold at a public auction to the highest bidder where that person would be forced to labor under threat of punishment. Although California no longer uses the public auction block, our current prison system still practices slavery under the guise of involuntary servitude, which is simply slavery by another name. This euphemism does not hide the fact that slavery in any form is an evil institution and has no place in California or anywhere else for that matter. It also doesn't hide the fact that the vast majority of people forced and coerced to labor in today's prison slave system are black or have indigenous ancestry. Last November, voters in four states, including Alabama, Alabama, y'all, approved ballot measures that changed their state constitutions to prohibit slavery and involuntary servitude as punishment for crime. It's imperative that this legislature allow California voters the opportunity to reject slavery in all its forms now and forever. I respectfully request your I vote. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if your witness comes in while we go ahead and take any others that are in support of the bill. Natasha Minsker, Smart Justice California, in strong support. Danica Rodarmo on behalf of Initiate Justice, the GRIP Training Institute, and the Transformative In Prison Work Group in support. Good morning. Marco George on behalf of the California Public Defenders Association and also the San Francisco Public Defenders Office in support. Melinda Kakani with the Children's Defense Fund California, also in support. Tasia Stevens with Catalyst California in strong support. Dorsey Nunn, founder of all of us Anon in legal services for prisoners with children in strong support. Thank you. Joanne Shear, on behalf of Felony Murder Elimination Project and my son Anthony in strong support. Good morning, Emily Harris with the Ella Baker Center for Human Rights in strong support. Tatiana Lewis with All of Us or None and strong support of ACA 8. Thank you. Good morning. My name's Aliyah Muhammad with Simply Unique Community Services and All of Us or None in strong support. Thank you. Sol Mercado Planting Justice out of Oakland in strong support of ACA 8. 
Sonia Tonneson Castellano with Communities United for Restorative Youth Justice in strong support. Thank you. Thank you. Colin McKellarith representing Dream Beyond Bars in strong support. Jim Lindbergh on behalf of the Friends Committee on Legislation of California and also voicing support today for Californians <laughs> for safety and justice. Morning. Henry Ortiz for Legal Services for Prisoners for Children and the All of Us or None chapter here in Sacramento and strong support. Thank you. Susan Bustamante with the California Coalition Women Prisoners and strong support. Thank you. Good morning, Chair and members. Jeronimo Aguilar, Jeronimo Aguilar here, Policy Analyst with Legal Services for Prisoners with Children. Also here representing All of Us or None. Uh, proud co-sponsor in support, and also I'd like to state that Anti-Recidivism Coalition is also in support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm John Cannon with Legal Services for Prisoners with Children and a proud member of All of Us Are None and strong support. Thank you. Good morning. Tanisha Cannon with Legal Services for Prisoners with Children and a member of All of Us Are None and strong support of ACA 8. Jesse Clyde Burleson, CDC number D9028431 years 87 to 2018. On behalf of everybody, strong support. LSPC, all of us in the. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Alex Diaz, uh, I'm with Communities United for Restorative Youth Justice. Uh, we strongly support. The Thank you. Thank you. Adriana Champagne Zamora with the League of Women Voters of California and strong support. Thank you. My name is Robert. I'm from all of us in support of. We couldn't hear you. One more time. Yeah. Oh, speaking to the mic? Yes. I'm thank sorry. You. My name is Don Wilson, uh, and I'm from All of Us organization. Thank you. Danica Rodarmel delivering support for the ACLU. Thank you. Are there any others in support? Is there anyone in opposition to the ACA? Anyone in opposition? Seeing none, bring it back to committee members for any questions or, or comments. Yes, Ms. Ortega. I just want to thank the author for her leadership on this issue and we'll be fully supporting. Thank you. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry I'm late. Uh, I, I know I missed some of this, and uh, I had a few questions. Uh, one is regarding uh, legal coercion. Is that, mm -hmm. uh, did we go over that at all? Did we? Not, not as a part of the original testimony. I mean, as the opening statement, no. Because I, I know, uh, I, we, we did some research into other states that have it, and we couldn't find the legal coercion portion of it. I was just wondering if, if maybe, uh, Anybody's talked about that part? So we can, um, if I can ask for clarification. So legal coercion is not defined um, currently in the um, provision within our constitution, nor is it included in the updated language. And so if you can clarify what specific parts of legal, legal coercion are you referencing? Well, I just, uh, I went through a few of the states um, and I, I couldn't find that legal coercion is in the other states if they if they maybe haven't addressed it either if this is a national thing that needs to be addressed i don't know if your committee's talked about that so each um various states uh form their constitution with you know every state um is formed through through their constitution and not every state had this provision um, or exception to slavery when they did amendments um california did um, there are 16 states currently in the nation that have this um, provision that states that involuntary servitude is allowed um, in terms of punishment, or sometimes you use words with incarcerated individuals, it, it, it varies. Um, recently, as we noted as a part of the opening statement that um, states like Alabama and Oregon, um, their legislature sent that to the voters and, they, and it passed um, to remove that language. And so we still as a state have it, but not every state, there's only 16 left that have this type of language and not every, and it's not in the same, 
format or same wording, but this type of language that allows an exception um, for involuntary servitude to use or forms of slavery to be used. Um, and so this is what we're trying to remove from our particular state. Gotcha. And then my, my other concerns are with uh, the good and work time that are calculated into sentencing at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, is that going to be addressed also? Because uh, normally good and work time is our times that are given to to basically lower their, their time or give the, right. get them out earlier. Now that we're not requiring the work part, has that been discussed? Like is work time not going to be given anymore? It's not that we're not requiring the work um, part. There is a rehabilitative aspect um, to working. And that and this doesn't impact this. What this impacts is the part related to involuntary servitude that says that if you don't work for whatever reason, um, then you can um, have your time increase. So say you got credits for not um, for working and you had them, I don't, I don't know the right terminology and, and, and maybe you can help me with it, John. But um, you know, you got credits. Now punishment will take those credits that you've earned away. It's like for you getting, working an hourly job and you booked leave and then someone was upset with you because you didn't show up to work that day. And you know, you have 20 hours of leave on the books. We don't care. We're taking those 20 hours back because we're upset that you didn't show up for work this day where you earn that. It's your right to have it. No one can take that away. And that's what's being done is they're being punished with taking credits that they've earned away. They're being punished with, um, um, what's the right term? It's a, it's a form. The 115s. The 115s, which endangers them to being able to um, leave early, have visits with their family, things like that. And so there's a lot of punishment related to it, which makes it then and voluntary servitude, which is forced labor, which we do not have in any other aspect in our state. And forced labor is a part of um, slavery. And so that's why we're asking that to be removed. Okay. So it's, it doesn't impact rehabilitation. And we're working to figure and to define things in the legislation, Let, not this legislation, but legislatively. So it's not defined in the courts, but the constitution has to be pure. This goes to the voters. Mm -hmm. And so we can figure out legislatively and define what rehabilitative work looks like. Um, but that is not something that needs to be in the constitution because that is dynamic and would change. Um, from generation to generation. Okay. I was just worried that with this bill, maybe, unfortunately, then now the courts will start saying that, well, now we're not going to give you work time because you don't even have to work. Whereas I know a lot of them are looking forward to that because they can get out earlier. Oh, absolutely. So I, I was just afraid that, and I'm sure you're, you have the same concerns. If, if it does, it'll be addressed. But that, that was something that, that worried me. There's a rehabilitative aspect to working, but it's rehabilitative, not punitive, not forced. It's a part of the rehabilitative re response because we want to reduce recidivism and we want to ensure that people who are incarcerated come out whole, healthy, and ability to integrate um, fully into society and be able to work. And so this is part of that, but it cannot be under a system of coercion, uh, punishment, um, anything that resembles slavery because that's slavery is not rehabilitative. And so uh, another aspect that I'm also thinking about is like on the civil side where say somebody's trying to get their kids and the judge says that you have to go through this, this and this to get your kids. Would that be something that would also be addressing that? Like they can't be forced to go do something that they don't want to go do? Well, this particularly, um, the language we said except punishment of a crime. And so in, in aspects of child custody basis, there's not a, that doesn't impact, a, that's not, um, impacted by a crime. Our exception in the Constitution relates specifically to an exception as it relates to punishment of a crime. And then so like maybe drug rehab, what if you're ordered to do drug rehab and they're like, I don't, I don't want to go do drug rehab as well. I, I know I'm playing devil's advocate, but I'm just, I'm yeah, just trying I don't, to make sure that we don't, we don't drug have Drug rehab would not be forced labor. So we're talking particularly of in our, in our prison system where we have work requirements or like, what about community service? Like part of their thing is also, okay, you don't want to go to jail, you're gonna to have to also do community service. But one that is also an option, you can do one or the other, right? So you can choose, but I don't think that that would impact. Community service is not um, the same as, um, as work, um, as it's defined currently in our constitution, not that I believe. Mm -hmm. I don't think that would be impacted by that. Okay. So I, I'm sure you get right. That, those were my concerns that I had while reading this bill. Mr. Vath, yeah. is there anything you want to give light to that I didn't explain properly? No, I, I would just say everything you said is right on point. From my experience of 25 years incarceration here in California and CDCR, 
I would say that the vast majority of people incarcerated want to work. Um, there were several times when I opened up a new institution and they didn't have job assignments yet. And I volunteered to work. Why? Because I want to get out of my cell. There are certain fringe benefits of getting out um, and working. And so the vast majority of people want to work. Um, they want to better themselves, right? But this concept and this practice of slavery, as the member stated, is not rehabilitative by any means. And that's what this bill is simply to do. And in fact, I believe that this would, when this changes, it will strongly um, you know, promote rehabilitation for incarcerated people who want to work with rehabilitative programs and not be punished for maybe being sick one day and not showing up and getting a 115 and not being able to go home to their families for several more months and being punished for just not going to work because they're sick. And so are they getting punished right now when they are sick? When, when some people, you got it's a process to get like a lay-in Right, and I know several people that were sick, and because they didn't get their laying in time, you got see the doctor and all that, and there's a whole process for that. And if I wake up sick and I don't go to work that day, right, I'll, I'll get punished and get a 115 and get those good time credits taken, right, because I didn't get a chance to go to the doctor yet to get a lay in, and that happens quite frequently, and people shouldn't be punished for things like that. Like I said, the vast majority of people want to work, and I, I even, um, <laughs> Like there was a time when I was like on a waiting list for like two years trying to work and I was like appealing it like, hey, I want to work, you know? So, and I'm not, no, I'm not the exception and there's plenty of people that want to do that. Okay, and Ms. Wilson, um, maybe that's addressed too, but if, what if they do voluntarily want to work and then unfortunately he does get sick I don't know, maybe that's something else you guys can maybe address also to where they don't get penalized for that. Right. Because so the, we can get sick at work and Yeah, we, we have the ability to call in, but you yeah. know, you lose a bit of autonomy when you, you know, are in prison. And so I, I wanna read this definition because I, I could have to start with your question. Um, and it says for people serving criminal sentences, servitude means work that does not serve a rehabilitative purpose or fall within the so-called housekeeping exception for chores such as cleaning one's own living area and common areas. And so that, it's that key part that it serves a rehabilitative pur purpose. And so when they're volunteering to work, so to speak, that is a part of their rehabilitative um, um, process and that is something that a judge may factor in or even um, a warden over a, a prison system. Um, and so that's what I think is key is that it's a part of their rehabilitative purpose. It's not something that's punishment. And I forgot to include, and I know Holden is working on this bill, that part of punishment is also solitary confinement. People have been put in solitary confinement for refusing to work. And remember, because they lose a bit of autonomy, when they say they're sick, there's, as he noted, there's a process for that. It's not just you and I, we wake up, our stomach's upset, you know, we're having a mental health day and we call in and say, I just, I just can't do it today. No, there is a process. Um, and, and that is subjective as well and, and discretion. And sometimes, you know, you might've had a boss who didn't like you, right? So if you have someone who doesn't like you or thinks you're faking, they can be like, no, you gotta show up. And so um, they lose that. And that shouldn't be a part of our rehabilitative process. That is actually counterintuitive to the rehabilitative process. So I, I know your, your witness is here. And she I know is. Ms. Bonte has a question. So okay. I want to hear the witness and Thank you. ask your question. Go ahead, you have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair and Committee. My name is April Grayson, Policy Associate for the Sister Warrior Freedom Coalition, proud co-sponsor of ACA 8. Sister Words is a statewide coalition of formerly and currently incarcerated women and trans people of all genders, as well as people directly affected by systems. I am a person who was arrested at 19 and served a seven year sentence as a criminalized survivor of human trafficking, enslaved in a prison that I shouldn't have ever been placed in due to the failure of the state to recognize me as a victim of human trafficking. Looking at prisons today and understanding the foundation on which it was built on, I think back to the hyper criminalization of black Americans after slavery was theoretically abolished in 1865. From 1865 to the early 1940s, black people were arrested for being black in public, for free labor, and leased out to plantation owners and manufacturers for cheap labor throughout the country. This system was soon replaced by chain gangs, a dehumanizing practice of chaining together incarcerated people to perform manual labor. While the labor was changed to manufacturing, farming, and firefighting, the system of slavery is still largely the same. Cheap labor being performed by over-criminalized black and brown people the 1800s seems so far removed from 2023, but we aren't as progressive as we think we are. When I entered prison at 19, I asked my counselor to place me in school to finish my high school education. Instead, I was assigned to the yard crew to hoe hard dirt for hours. If I would have refused to report to the yard crew to finish school, I would have been put on C status, 
C status is a custody level that results in loss of privileges, no phone calls, no quarterly packages, a $45 shopping limit on canteen for toiletries per month. You are only allowed out of your cell for three days a week for a total of six hours for the week to wash clothes. And if you're lucky, you can go outside if the yard is open. For lifers, a 115 could be the difference. C status can be the difference from board denying you a date and granting your freedom. As directly impacted people, members of Sister Word Freedom Coalition and our partner organizations, we know firsthand the most incarcerated people want to work. We believe they should be able to choose jobs that align with their skills to better position them to secure a job upon release or to be able to continue their education and participate in programs that facilitate post-release success. ACA 8 would open the door to making that possible towards reducing recidivism and increasing public safety. A yes vote today brings us one step closer to helping incarcerated people obtain the education and training that they need to come home and be productive, proactive citizens in their communities. Thank you for your time, Chair, and I apologize for being late. No problem. <laughs> Ms. Bonta. Well, thank you. I wanted to thank the author for bringing forward, yes, all, all the snaps. Um, I wanted to thank the author for bringing uh, this bill forward again. I know that we've seen this before, uh, and quite frankly, given the fact that we are just now in a state, uh, in the state of California, willing to recognize the importance of rehabilitation as a part of the R in our CDCR, uh, it's a very timely bill. Uh, we spend a lot of time hearing from people who have received, you know, between eight cents and 34 cents an hour for the work that they do. And we've heard the stories of people who have gone through um, COVID and needing to essentially risk their lives for fear of the punitive measures uh, in, in terms of, uh, taking away credits or impacting the way that they, or being put into solitary confinement if they refuse to perform their work. Uh, so they essentially had to risk their lives yeah. for certain in order to be able to uh, ensure that they could comply. And that is by definition uh, what invol involuntary servitude is. So it is time in the state of California that we make sure that we put into our constitution the fact that we are not going to accept involuntary servitude as a fact of life for anybody and certainly not for people who are incarcerated. So I want to thank you for bringing forward this bill and thank you for your testimony and real life examples. We're looking at people who have, who are here but for mm -hmm. um, what we provided to you in, in, in CDCR and I want to thank you for being here. Any other comments? You may close. Thank you to the chair and the members of the Public Safety Committee. I thank my witnesses um, for being here to be able to testify of their own personal lived experience. And I would just encourage, and I vote, as we as a legislature have to say that it is not acceptable for this to be in our Constitution and give it to the voters so they can agree with us. As a reminder, this is not, we are not the final decision makers in this. Our voters are, so let's give them the chance to vote their values, vote their morals, and say that um, involuntary servitude, slavery, is should not be in our Constitution. And with that, I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Um, we don't yet have a quorum. We have four, okay. four members here. We'll establish a quorum, and then we'll vote on your item. Thank you so much, you. Mr. Chair. <laughs>